Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and we're back with another how to play for Lancer the RPG, this time talking about the support playstyle and support mechs. So, what is a support? Well, a support predominantly is a playstyle slash mech style, and I'm differentiating because I'll get to it here in a moment, it'll, it'll make sense that focuses predominantly in enhancing the performance of their allies by providing a variety of buffs, whether it's movement or removing conditions, even being able to heal other mechs. It's also just a weird kind of mid-ground place. There are very few actual support mechs, and instead it's more of an add-on to other kind of mech styles, and not only that, but support is not necessarily a very simple thing. A lot of the non-combat extra kind of systems in the game also kind of can be attributed to how support mechs plays. And I'll make it as clear as I can in this video. So when we're talking what frames and systems you should select when you're playing your particular support playstyle, well, the frame is not necessarily as important. There are a lot of mech frames out there that are supporty, but also perform other benefits as well. Predominantly support and controller, which we'll do controller in another video, but you know, anything that can help allies move and also hinder enemy movement is something that is both a support and control ability. Now there are a couple, well, a handful I should say, of pure support mechs in the game, and I'll go over them here in just a moment. But when you're looking out for your support playstyle, don't get necessarily hang up, hung up on the mech frame. Instead, be on the lookout for specific systems and things you can do to benefit your allies, whether your focus is to make sure that your allies damage is as high and as frequent as possible, or whether it's just you making up for a lot of the things missing by your allies. You have a bunch of slow defender allies, for instance, getting a lot of mobility type systems that can help them position easier is very supportive and going to be very beneficial for your team. As well, doing things that can help protect your more squishy allies or the allies who are doing the damage is also very supporty. So let's talk about the granddaddy of all support mechs, and we're gonna let's mention the Lancaster specifically. So the Lancaster has not that much going for it as far as straight combat ability is concerned. It's got kind of low HP for a mech. It does have one armor though, and it has generally very standard stats otherwise. The only thing to really mention is their absurdly high repair capacity, which it uses with some of its other systems and abilities. As well, it has a really high system point, as you can see it needs it for all the systems it's going to need to assist its allies. On top of that, it has some really good base frame traits, one of which, the most important, being combat repair, which allows them to, as a full action, essentially revive an ally. If there's a destroyed mech, you can use a whole action and four of your repairs, which you got plenty of, to restore that mech to one structure and one stress with one HP. Not very sturdy, but it's better than being straight out destroyed. And if the destroyed mech didn't kill the pilot for whatever reason, well, then you have an ally back on the field, which is immensely powerful. Another part of the Lancaster's base traits as well are its redundant systems, allowing it to use its repair capacity for itself or an adjacent ally, though you get to pick if they are allowed to take from your repair capacity or not. So if your allies are constantly repairing themselves in a very hard battle, it's important to keep that in mind and maybe share some of your supply if you're not using it for something else. It's a very powerful effect overall, and it can make it easier for your allies to not necessarily focus on things like engineering, which does give more repair capacity. And not only that is going to be the Latch Drone, which I'm going to pull up right over here. And what the Latch Drone does is you can clamp it on as your as a quick action to an allied mech 
and you take one heat at the start of each of your turns, but your ally gains a plus one accuracy on all attacks, checks, saves, and gain immunity to the impaired, jam, slowed, shred, and immobilized conditions from characters other than itself. So any self-inflicted effects still apply. This is a very powerful effect, but on top of this, you also get the Latch Drone Launcher, which allows you to strike an ally within range 8, and if you are successful, and of course it's on a base evasion of 8, so you need to at least hit an 8 to make this work, either you or your target may spend one repair to restore half of your target, the one you're hitting, uh, target's HP, which is really solid. Granted, you're using a repair for half the HP, but it's sudden. It's a single quick action rather than a full action to do so. And you can expend one of your repairs to do this. A very, very powerful effect. Now, the Lancer is a very non-combative mech, only having a main aux mount, but it makes up for it for its pure supportive capabilities with its the frame itself, and that's not including even some of its systems. My favorite one being the restock drone, which more or less what it does is as it's sitting there, any ally can run up to it and activate it as a quick action, clearing a D6 heat, which is pretty good. One condition and also reloading one of their loading weapons, though after being activated, the drone then disintegrates, so you can't pick it back up. A very powerful effect, and if you have a really high engineering, you can have a lot of these just dotted all over the battlefield, and as a as a quick action deploy, well, that's two per turn, giving your allies plenty of opportunity to run around and pick these up, or even giving an enemy a reason to target them using valuable attacks for their side against something that uh, essentially was just going to negate the damage they would deal anyway. Very, very powerful. The next support mech I really want to bring up is going to be the Swallowtail. The scout slash sniper style support mech its biggest features are its massive sensor range, having a sensor range of 20, being able to easily scope out enemy locations, which is one of its big features. And other than that, having a low health, again, no armor, and not, well, and a little bit of a better evasion, though not nearly the repair capacity of the Lancaster and not nearly as many system points, its biggest feature as far as support is concerned are its prophetic scanners. Once per round, when it locks onto a target, the target becomes shredded until the end of its next turn. This means that the Swallowtail can spend its turn just using lock-ons on various targets, shredding them, making them, you know, negating any armor they have and also providing lock-on, which gives allies accuracy when they aim at these targets. Not only that, and I'm going to read it here, its core system being the Cloud Scout Taxum Swarms, that's a big mouthful, uh, gives it a reaction when activated once per round that when an ally takes damage from another character that's also within line of sight, you roll a d6. On a 4 or higher, it's actually a simulation. Your ally gains resistance to all the damage dealt by the attack and then may teleport up to three spaces, representing where their true location is. On a three or less, nothing happens. Your ally doesn't gain a resistance. Well, I shouldn't say nothing happens, but they can instead teleport up to six spaces after taking the damage, which is pretty cool, though a little weird, honestly, when you try to look at it. It's a very powerful frame. And on top of that, it's marker light is a very good ability. Well, not necessarily supporty. Uh, when you make a tech attack against a creature within your line of sight, they take two heat and then lock on and cannot benefit from soft cover until the lock on is cleared. Additionally, once before the start of your turn, when an allied character hits your target, you may declare a reaction that they've hit the weak spot and if it wasn't already, the attack becomes a critical. Meaning that, again, granted this one is a full tech attack action, your lock-on, which still shreds, does additional heat damage to the target and can ensure allies, because it's a full tech, unless you're overcharging, you can't get a benefit. And I think this actually only works for ally characters. It does. So when an ally strikes it, they're getting a guaranteed crit. An incredibly powerful effect 
and I hope now I've really demonstrated what exactly support mechs are for. The Landcaster being a big repair mech, kind of being the healer of mechs, having a lot of good abilities to aid other mechs on the battlefield, and the Swallowtail setting up a lot of damage, having really good abilities to lock on, shred targets, and of course, help negate damage as well. On top of that, there are a couple of other frames, more specifically the Kid and the Swallowtail Ranger variant, which I'm not gonna go into all in this or this will make it a super long video, but the, in their licenses, they do have some really good abilities. Starting off with the Kid, we're gonna talk about Pebcac. Yes, Pebcac. So what Pebcac does is as a quick tech action by the Kid Mech, uh, or, wh or whatever mech has this system, I should say. It's not necessarily for the kid. Uh, an ally within line of sight and sensors does a quick flash reboot. This can stop NHP cascades, which is really good. If you're in NHP cascades, you lose complete control and it starts doing just whatever, trying to kill the pilot, what have you. Really good to be able to stop that. Uh, it, it gives the target immunity to all tech, all tech actions, blah, hostile or allied, and other than this, uh, other than this particular one, until the end of their next turn, this cannot be used on jammed characters. Very powerful effects. It's a really quick system reboot as a quick action, and it allows your ally to not spend an action re or a full turn trying to reboot their mech. Though this one does come with some downsides. You roll a d6, and well, there's a lot of things here. If you roll one, they become jammed, which is not good. Two, they just move in a random direction, which could be not good, or it could be really good, who knows. Uh, the target moves immediately three spaces to the closest character, hostile or allied, and makes an improvised attack. Probably not going to be that dangerous, but still kind of annoying. Your target falling prone and taking two damage, not too good, not exactly what you want. Target vents a d6 heat and deals a cool amount to all adjacent characters. Really good for your frontliner, reducing heat and also doing damage to adjacent characters, good or bad, hopefully bad. Or a six, your target immediately takes the stabilized action and can choose what to do, which is amazing. Uh, if you roll a six, they do really, really well. Anything else dependent on the situation could be really bad. Pevcac is an okay one. The reason why I mentioned it, though, is you only need to pick up one license level of the kid to pick up Pebcac. As a, as a quick action, essentially save our butts from an NH, NHP cascade or to save an ally who's currently being messed by tech attacks from other mechs, this can be a very powerful effect, though it's a bit of a gamble. Contrary to the last system, though, if you get two license levels in the kid mech, not only do you get the kid mech, but you also get the field approved brass ignorant modifications, which I, I like the translation of it's great for people in the field, but let's not tell the higher ups. Uh, what it does is you choose an ally character within the line of sight and within sensor range and you power up their weapons. When they make a ranged or melee attack with this weapon, the damage cannot be reduced in any way. So it can't be reduced by armor or resistance. Uh, they are pushed back one space from the kick from the powerful strike and on a hit the target must make a hole save or be knocked prone. The effect ends when your target successfully hits with a range or melee attack roll or at the end of the scene. The best part about this particular modification is as a quick tech action it's not limited so you can do this action as much as you can powering up your allies' abilities if you have an enemy who is particularly resistant or armored on the battlefield. Very, very powerful, and unlike the last system, not quite the gamble. Some very good effects. Now, not necessarily from a support mech, but a very good support ability is the Black Witch, which is technically a support and controller mech, but it's uh, license level one gives you Pharaoh Slash, a very powerful ability that any character within a uh, line of sight of range of eight can be moved five spaces in any direction. Now, if they're hostile, they must make an agility save or be pulled five spaces in the direction of your choice. Uh, this movement does ignore engagement, so you can't use it to provoke Overwatch, unfortunately. But if it's an allied unit, you can use this to move them along in combat. This is perfect for moving your slow defender mechs 
out in the out where they need to be on the field or to get allies out of a really bad spot. And since it's only a quick action and is not limited, you can do this as many times as necessary as long as they're within the initial eight range. Very, very solid. Now, two license levels into the Black Witch, not only do you get the Black Witch, but you also get its perimeter command plate, a very powerful plate that has two effects, either repulse or attract. Now, when it's repulsing, hostile characters must make a whole save or be immediately pushed three spaces in a direction of your choice, which is very solid. If this was to cause them to collide with an obstruction, they're then knocked prone. If it's an ally, though, when they step onto the space as a free action, they can immediately fly in three spaces as a as a free action. It's very, very solid, and it adds to their essential speed. This is a speed-up plate, provides three, uh, three hexes of flight, which is very, very powerful, and can be a very good setup on the field. Now, if it's a track... If the enemy fails their hull save, they become immediately immobilized. They can clear the immobilized by making a successive repeating save as a quick action. It's also cleared if the, per the command plate is destroyed, which is a deployable, which has 20 health, but still very good, very powerful. And you can only have one on the field at any one time but one can be enough. It's a very powerful effect, and it makes the Witch a very supporty kind of style of mech, including some of its other more controlly abilities. So that's a lot of frames and systems, and I try to be a little bit less specific in these videos because, one, I don't know what's going to come out for Lancer in the near future, and, or even late future, I suppose. But two, things could always change as well. Unfortunately, when it comes to the support play style, it's really hard to describe without using examples. And again, I hope I've proven at least somewhat what a support mech is supposed to do, aiding their allies by giving damage, helping movement, kind of covering for their weaknesses in a sense, or improving the things they're already really good at. I do have a list of talents, though, that are going to be very helpful for any kind of mech you pick. So let's get into that. First is going to be Empath, pretty much the premier support style of talent. Its first ability is really good. It's called Sympathetic Precognition, and you gain a reaction by the same name that allows you to, once per scene, so this is only pretty much once per combat, as a reaction when an allied makes a skill check, attack, or save, you can instead take that failed save, or I'm sorry, they can choose to not take the, to not roll, and instead treat their check, whatever it is, as if they had a rolled a 10 on the D20. Now, considering that 10 is the default success rate for a lot of checks in this game, that's incredibly powerful, almost a guaranteed success, but considering the bonuses your allies might have to combat, I mean, a 10 can be enough to hit a lot of enemies. Now, even though it's once per scene, there's no range limit. It's just an ally within line of sight, which is really good and a very, very powerful effect. The next talent that you, or the next benefit you get from Empath at level two is called Bend to Will. And what it does is once per scene, another once per combat essentially like ability, when an ally is making a structure or overheating check, you can have them roll twice, taking the better result. This can prevent an immediate explosion of an ally due to a really, really bad roll. So overall, a very powerful effect. And last but not least, shared subjectivity, which is a very interesting effect. As a quick action, you immediately become stunned until the start of your next turn, mind melding with an ally within line of sight. But as you do so, until the end of their next turn, anytime that character makes an attack, check, or saving throw, they can, instead of choosing to roll, choose instead to take a 10 on the d20 check. Again, using the same powerful effect from Sympathetic Precognition, only for everything until the end of their next turn. And then, of course, you're stunned, so you can't use any reactions or anything, but at the be as soon as your next turn begins, you're all set to go and ready to keep going. Empath is really good, but its very powerful effects are all once per scene, so you need to be very careful when using each of them. Next up is the Leader Talent Tree, which is a really good one, and if you're familiar with Bardic Inspiration, this is very similar to that. So, you get Field Commander as your first 
rank in this particular talent. What it does is you gain three leadership dice and you can, as an action, issue an order. Now, it's a free action once per turn and you can issue an order to an ally to do a specific course of action. And then you give them one of your leadership die. When then on their turn, they can use that die as a bonus accuracy to any check, save, or what have you, leading to them fulfilling the order that you give gave them. And this they can hold on to that until the end of the scene. So it doesn't even have to be necessarily right away, but it's a really good way to give bonus accuracy on a variety of checks. Now, at the second rank of leader, you gain five leadership dice every combat rather than three and now you can take the issue command reaction which when another player starts their turn you can do the same thing issuing a command giving them a die and they can use it up until the end of the end of the scene as long as they're following the course of action that you set out essentially it gives you more ability to issue order and instead of using your actions to do so, even though it's a free action once per turn, you can now do it again as a reaction, which is very, very powerful. At, at the third rank, you get Inspiring Presence, which gives you six dice rather than five, and allies that have your leadership dice can now expend them to reduce damage from an attack by a D6 when take, uh, or deal an additional D6 bonus damage when they hit an attack rather than getting a plus one accuracy to a check save or what have you. Very powerful effect. Very, it's just bardic inspiration in Lancer form. A very solid talent overall and all of its ranks are very, very good. Last but not least is Drone Commander. Not necessarily very support inherently, but there are a lot of good support drones, a lot of them, in fact. So being able to command them and have them be a little bit healthier, I would think is overall a supporty kind of talent, if you ask me. Regardless, what it gives you at first is all your drones have five additional HP and you gain the Shepherd Drone Protocol. Uh, as a protocol, at the beginning of your turn, you can move, all, move a drone you control up to four spaces if it is within your sensors. Very, very good actually for the Swallowtail as it has a massive sensor range and you can drop drones all over the battlefield with how drones work, it being pretty much being anywhere within range, uh, line of sight and sensors. So this is a really good way to have a lot of drones positions to either help allies or even damage enemies. Overall, a very good effect. The second rank gives you Energized Swarm once per round. When you make an attack that consumes Lock-On, again, really good for the Swallowtail, uh, your drones immediately emit a vicious pulse of energy. All characters of your choice within Burst 1 areas centered on each of your drones take a D6 energy damage. Each character can only be affected by a pulse once uh, from one drone, even if the areas overlap. So if you have multiple drones, only the enemy can only be affected by one of them. Very good, and again, if you're having drones all over the battlefield, really good. But the last one is actually incredibly supportive. You get the Invigorate Quick Action. What it does is, as a quick action, you send a pulse of energy to an allied character within range 3, drawing a line from you to them. You may extend this pulse from your target to another allied character, again, extending a line to them within range of 3, chaining all as much as you can, as long as you're not hitting the same ones twice. Ally characters who are used as pulse targets during this particular line are given four overshield. Hostile characters in this line's path, so in between, actually take two energy damage. This allows you to give your allies and your drones four overshield, which is essentially temporary hit points, and is a very good way to also deal some damage to the enemies if you've strategically placed your drones in the perfect checker patterns. So I like this particular talent a lot, and I do think it benefits a lot of support play styles. I will say that unlike the other two, it is a little bit less supporty, but you know, that's it's up for you to decide. And normally at this point I do core bonuses, but there's not really any core bonuses specifically dedicated to helping allies. Almost all core bonuses, I would say all core bonuses, inherently affect your mech and thus don't do anything for your allies. Granted, something like the Barrios frame, for, 
for instance, or a Formarian frame, one of those two, make your mecha size larger, meaning that if you have a defender mech, then you can provide more guardian stuff. But that's a defender thing, not necessarily a support thing. So, you know, I'm not going to offer any core bonuses as there are none that I feel are super supporty at this time. But I did provide you all with a lot of information on particular mechs or systems that might help you out on whatever journey you have with your supports. The biggest thing is look around for systems to pick and choose the kind of ways you want to help your allies whether it's being a drone commander that have a bunch of aiding drones to your allies doing support damage and all that kind of stuff whether you're a lock-on monster like the swallowtail or its variant who do a lot of good benefits when they lock on to targets making your allies more accurate and potentially even doing more damage or you just want to play the good old boy lancaster and be essentially this game's version of a healer it's a very vague role and the vaguest in the game but it's also a really fun one if you can kind of theory craft your way into making a mech that does just some really good things and help your teammates out. I've seen support benefits used on a lot of other mechs. And if you're fusing support into your current playstyle, whether you're a striker, defender, artillery, or controller, which is the obvious choice, there's a lot of ways you can slip some support benefits in as well. So I hope this cleared out the general idea of what a support mech is. It gave you guys some ideas on how you can play a support mechs. And as well, Lancer videos don't do that well. It's just how it is. There's not a lot of people looking at Lancer content on the internet. And even if they are, my channel is not necessarily the Lancer channel, though I do know a lot of people appreciate these videos. So I'm going to ask you to support the like button down here in the bottom to, you know, support me and the channel doing, you know, what supports do best and as well to share these videos with anyone you find anywhere on your choice of medium, whether that's on Twitter, Reddit or what have you. If you have someone who's interested in the game and looking forward to playing Lancer or needs just a little bit of help. I would highly appreciate it if you share these videos with them as it can help new players in the game. But that's going to be it for me. Hopefully those videos not too, too long, but it's already looking like it's going to be a 30 minute video. Uh, it was a harder one to explain. What can I say? And I also just like to talk a lot. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me and I'll see you all next time. Bye.